In the process of glycolysis, we produce NADH molecules and we also produce NADH molecules in pyruvate decarboxylation and the citric acid cycle. In fact, in the citric acid cycle, we also produce a similar molecule known as FADH2. Now, what exactly is the purpose of these two molecules? Well, these molecules basically play a role in transferring or transporting our electrons from glucose into a special region on the inner mitochondrial membrane known as the electron transport chain. And what the electron transport chain does is it basically transports electrons all the way to the final electron acceptor known as oxygen and we form water as a result. And this electron transport chain also establishes an electrochemical gradient that is used to synthesize ATP molecules and it's the ATP molecule that is used by the cell as our energy source. So let's take a look at the structure of our electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain is shown in the following diagram. So we have the inner membrane of the mitochondria, which is a phospholipid bilayer. We have the outer membrane that is not shown. Let's imagine it's somewhere here. We have the space in between the two membrane shown here. That is the intermembrane space. And we also have this region, which is is the mitochondrial matrix and the citric acid cycle as well as pyruvate decarboxylation takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. So the electron transport chain itself consists of a series of four protein complexes. We have protein complex one, two, three, and four. And we also have a complex of proteins shown here that is known as ATP synthase that actually uses the electrochemical gradient to synthesize ATP molecules. So basically, protein complex one, protein complex three, and four are used to establish the electrochemical gradient and our ATP synthase uses that electrochemical gradient to synthesize our ATP molecules. So let's take a quick look at, e at each one of these protein complexes and see what the function and the name of these protein complexes are. So let's begin with protein complex number one. Now protein complex number one consists of many proteins and together protein complex number one is known as NADHQ oxidoreductase or NADH dehydrogenase. So it's called oxidoreductase because we have oxidation reduction reactions taking place. So what exactly is the purpose of protein complex number Number one. Well, NADH dehydrogenase basically accepts the electrons from NADH molecules produced in glycolysis, pyruvate decarboxylation, and the citric acid cycle. So let's imagine that our NADH is produced in the citric acid cycle and then that NADH travels to protein complex number one and it gives the two electrons to protein complex number one. Now when it donates those two electrons, those two electrons go onto a molecule known as flavor mononucleotide or FMN. So we reduce FMN which is basically a group that is found on protein complex number one and then those electrons basically travel via a series of groups our iron sulfur groups and eventually end up on a molecule known as ubiquinone shown by this Q circular symbol. So this is ubiquinon and ubiquinon is basically an important electron carrier. So ubiquinon is soluble inside our phospholipid bilayer membrane and it can basically move along our membrane. So what this basically does is it accepts our electrons and when you and when ubiquinon accepts our electrons it is reduced and 
and that reduced version of ubiquinon is known as ubiquinol. Now, the most common ubiquinon molecule in mammals and specifically in humans is coenzyme Q10. So coenzyme Q10 is basically the specific ubiquinon that is used by mammals and by humans. Now, once we reduce ubiquinon to ubiquinol, ubiquinol then travels from protein complex number one to protein complex number three. Now, actually, when this reaction takes place, when our electrons are transferred from NADH to our ubiquinon to form ubiquinol, we also actually pump four protons, four H ions from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. And so we begin creating our electrochemical gradient and our flavin mononucleotide also takes up two H ions from our matrix. Now once ubiquinol, the reduced version of ubiquinon travels to this protein complex number three, what happens is the main function of protein complex number three, also known as our cytochrome reductase or Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase basically functions to transfer those electrons from our carrier molecule, the ubiquinol, to a different electron carrier known as cytochrome C. So cytochrome C is basically a small protein that is water soluble that carries an electron from protein complex number three to protein complex number four. Now also, when our process within protein complex number three takes place, this pumps two hydrogen atoms from the mitochondrial matrix to our intermembrane space and that further creates that electrochemical gradient. Now when our electrons are transferred from ubiquinon to cytochrome C, cytochrome C then travels and attaches to protein complex number four, also known as cytochrome C oxidase. And the main function of protein complex number four is to basically basically use the electrons that is carried by cytochrome C to reduce our oxygen and form our water. Now, where exactly do we obtain the oxygen? Well, by breathing in. So when we breathe in, when we inhale, we take an oxygen and that's the same oxygen that is used by protein complex number four. Now, once we uh, reduce our oxygen, this protein complex number four also transports four H plus ions from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. And so we see that if we use one NADH molecule, we basically transport a total of 10 four, two, and two, so 10 H plus ions into the intermembrane space, and that establishes an electrochemical gradient. Now, that means we have many more H plus ions found on the intermembrane space than in the mitochondrial matrix. And, and so that means our H plus ions will naturally and spontaneously want to flow from the intermembrane space to the mitochondrial matrix. However, because they have a positive charge, they're polar, and that means they cannot actually pass through our phospholipid bilayer because of the hydrophobic tails. And that's exactly where ATP synthase comes into play. So ATP synthase is basically a complex of proteins that create channels that allow the H plus ions to flow through these regions. So basically our H plus ions begin to travel down their electrochemical gradient from a high concentration to a low concentration from a lot of charge to a very little charge. And as the H plus ions flow this way, 
into the mitochondrial matrix, the ATP synthase also basically combines ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and a phosphate group to synthesize our ATP molecules. So basically, for a single NADH that is formed in either the citric acid cycle or pyruvate decarboxylation, one NADH produces three ATP molecules. However, if we examine the NADH molecule that is formed in glycolysis to actually get from the cytoplasm where glycolysis takes place and into the mitochondrial matrix, the NADH molecule has to transport via our mitochondrial inner and outer membrane and that requires energy. So our NADH, for our NADH to get from the cytoplasm to the mitochondrial matrix, we have to use a single ATP molecule and that means the net result. So the net production of our NADH molecule that comes from glycolysis is not three, but only two ATP molecules because we had to use that one ATP molecule when we went from the cytoplasm into the mitochondrial matrix. So our NADH molecules produced in the, uh, in the mitochondrial matrix via the citric acid cycle or our pyruvate decarboxylation basically produces a net result of three ATP molecules, but the NADH produced in glycolysis produces a net result of only two ATP molecules. So let's basically summarize our results of what the electron transport chain is and how it actually works. So we have a series of four protein complexes, one, two, three, and four, and we also have our ATP synthase. Now, by the way, we still haven't discussed what protein complex two actually does. Protein complex two is known as our succinate oxidoreductase, and succinate oxidoreductase basically contains our enzyme, the protein, involved in the citric acid cycle. So we know that in the citric acid cycle, we form our FADH2 molecule, our electron carrier, and that FADH2 molecule is formed directly in protein complex number two. So protein complex number two, our succinate oxidoreductase forms FADH2 and then that FADH2 basically releases our electrons and those electrons are picked up by our ubiquinon molecule. So ubiquinon can also pick up, accept those electrons from protein complex number two and then that ubiquinol travels to protein complex number three. So let's go back and let's summarize our results. So high energy electron carriers called NADH molecules pass their electrons to flavin mononucleotide of complex number one, which then shuttles those electrons via a series of iron sulfur groups and onto a molecule known as ubiquinon. And the ubiquinon in humans is known as coenzyme Q10. Now FADH2 is itself synthesized in protein complex number two and our FADH2 transfers those electrons also to a molecule, our ubiquinon. Now, once we reduce the ubiquinon, once it gains those electrons, it becomes ubiquinol and it travels onto complex number three where it transfers the electrons to yet another electron carrier that is water soluble, a small protein known as cytochrome C. Now, cytochrome C moves onto complex number four where it transfers those electrons to complex number four and these electrons are used to actually reduce oxygen and form water. Now in the process, protein complex one, three, and four all release protons. They pump protons from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space, thereby establishing the electrochemical gradient. Notice that 
protein complex number two is not a proton pump and that means it does not actually pump any H ions into the intramembrane space. Now, the entire purpose of creating this um, electrochemical gradient is to basically create a high concentration of our H plus ions as well as a high amount of charge in the intermembrane space. And that allows these H plus ions to move down their electrochemical gradient from a region of high concentration to low concentration, from a region of high charge to low charge through these channels in our ATP synthase and when these H ions move we synthesize ATP molecules so for one NADH coming from the citric acid cycle or pyruvate decarboxylation we form three ATP molecules but for our NADH coming from glycolysis, we only synthesize two. Once again, because we have to use ATP to transport the NADH from the cytoplasm to the mitochondrial matrix. 